show now, I'm like, this is so collage heavy because I have been doing a lot of painting. And you can see I'm trying to combine painting and collage and I guess influenced by Jackson Pollock, I like the accidents, you know? I like to like play with things until an accident happens. Um, something unrepeatable. Like if someone said, Paul, can you do another one of those? I'll be like, I would have no idea how to do that, you know? It's an, I work as if everything's an experiment. It's been free, it's really freed me up. I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> this is not actually him, but I entitled it Zardasht, which is another name for Zarathustra. And even now, when I talk to those Iranian students, I say, Zara, I'm talking, I'm Zarathustra. They're like, what? I'm like, um, uh, Zoroaster, Zartasht. They're like, Zardasht, Zardasht. <laughs> you know, so apparently that is the Persian name for Zarathustra. And here he is, apparently, the illusion is he's dancing with it looks like fire. I'm not actually sure what that texture was, but um, which makes fun. I mean, which makes sense with the sun being part of this guy. And this is a this is a I think an American quilt, early American quilt. The background, and then this is painting. I've always felt guilty with my pure collages, like it's just so obviously cheating. You know, it's just like taking someone's this and someone else's that, put them together. So that's what really why I wanted to paint. And, um, but I had to like discover a process that would yield results that didn't depend on perfection because I'm trying to get over it. I think I'm, and I really think going through this whole process helped. But this is called the Air Thinnest Paper here. It's a kind of a direct reference to the title. This kind of was just like the mystery of the sky, kind of trying to give it spiritual meaning. And this is based on, everything in here is a Joseph Albers painting. You might have recognized that. He does the homage to the square series. So here, I had this relic, I mean, this is chaos for Joseph Albers. He did not even mix paints. He only used colors straight out of cans. And then he wrote down the number of the can <laughs> so that he could get it perfect again. Manual retentive perfection. So for me, this is a joke that it goes crazy here. And it actually went crazy all the way around the edges, but then I gave it a blue frame to bring that out. And it's entitled Big Blue Diamonds, because diamonds have been a part of my work for a long time. And this is one of a set of pieces, and you can probably see which three they were. And the one I started with was this one. And I was like, I was making fun of Mondrian. A few years ago, what I was doing was homages to different artists. I didn't know what else to do. You can always make art about art. Charles Barbier. I took a, took a cue from him. And um, so I was kind of playing around with Mondrian, but as you can see, this went too far. Or as I can see, this got so dense that it became a problem. And um, back here, there used to be an earth with a cutaway showing like the, the heat inside of the earth so um, these are and these are that's the 50 foot tall woman remember her it's a movie and this is, i don't know what movie that was from but i had i have a movie a uh, movie poster book that i cut down out of but it looks like chaos and i guess it's consumerism run out of control um a man and a woman who don't it doesn't look like they're coexisting very well but they're stuck together looks like us the third one, which I tossed together, it's worth the, all the money, all right? But it came very quickly. I hate to say tossed together like art is like so easy. But um, it's at least, for me, it has become therapy and fun. So I just go with it. But this one was put together to, to make a set of three pieces. And where I hadn't glued something down, I just went ahead and painted it opaque white. And um, it's better. It's simpler. It doesn't like overwhelm you. And uh, so I think I learned something from that. These are the earliest pieces, these two. And I think these came from my like fascination with beauty. I like beauty. One of my colleagues at school said, Did you, so you think there's room for beauty in art? And I looked around like it was a trick question. I went, well, I do. <laughs> yeah. I love these books, the Golden Book Encyclopedia. 
And I love the fascination with the thought that we could know everything. So these are just, these are beautiful um, illustrations. And really, I'm just, I'm riding the coattails of the illustrators of these. Um, but I found an arrangement that made nice sense color-wise. I moved these around and around. And the same thing here with these. These are the back covers. And um, here's Robert E. Lee. Thought about calling it R. E. Lee. Here's B. Franklin. So that was an easy title choice. B. Frank, isn't that like B. Frank? B. Frank? This world of perpetual motion is just a beautiful illusion. And that's a line from a song, stolen. Just like I stole the skin of the sky is the newspaper here. That's from a song about M.C. Escher, called M.C. Escher by Momus. Have you ever heard of that, Momus? M-O-M-U-S, he's a genius, and he wrote, a, it's kind of a rap song, but it's real quiet, it's British, and it's about M.C. Escher, it, it, you'll love it. Um, but I stole that line because what I did here, I found, I collect decks of cards, and I found these chap, these Chinese playing cards. So the mostly what you're seeing, and especially from a distance, all you're seeing is these Chinese playing cards. Well, I also found Barbie um, cards for dress your Barbie. By the way, thrift stores, all, all of these materials, except for the, assemb you know, the assembly parts, come from thrift stores. Um, but I found the Barbie, I, I don't buy, I don't buy Barbies, all right? <laughs> or Barbie wardrobe sets. But I will pick them up at the thrift store. And these, when I put these together, these are Barbie clothes that are put, been put on these soldiers. So, am I making fun of Chinese <laughs> men or Barbie? I don't know, but it's transsexual age. Everybody, you know, now it's in the open, everybody talks about it. Um, so I really like the pink and blueness. And then for a while, every piece I made was pink and blue. Now this, I really am most proud of. I made 40 of these and I, um, I found the 40 blocks of wood. And I had painted a block of wood and just like super saturated with white, super saturated it with white and like, but that it was a little color. And all it took was, I did this when I was at home in Raleigh in my brother's work shed. All it took was him saying, no. Oh, I was like, oh, I guess I'll take this. He goes, no, I want to keep that. I was like, you like that? He goes, yeah. So that's all it took for this whole direction to happen. Um, but I started stacking up the wood and then pouring paint on top of it, thinning it down and pouring paint on top of it and letting it just like filter down and letting that dry. And then pulling those apart. And I, even though I did it differently every time, there were 40 of, these, 40 of these boards, and every time I did it, oh, I discovered along the way Kamar varnish. Do y'all know Kamar varnish? It's like a spray varnish that's not, it's kind of nicely, not matte and not glossy. It kind of gives things like a really interesting sheen. And then I looked it up, and it's like everything. It's perfect. It's like acid-free. It's removable, it's reworkable, which means you can keep painting on it. And I'm just like, oh my God, I mean, it smells terrible. You have to use a respirator. Um, and I basically kept on doing this, like just stacking them up and, you know, marginally laying things down that might relate to each other. But it gradually became more, or pretty soon I saw Rorschach's in them. You know the Rorschach test? I thought the Rorschach test was a secret, and you can buy the Rorschach deck. They, it's actually still in production. But at Wikipedia, not only did they tell you what the Rorschach deck is, they show you all the pictures at like high resolution. So there they are, there's 12 of them, you know? It's all of a sudden it was like, I was asking people, which is your favorite Rorschach? So I made some pieces with those Rorschachs, and they, uh, that eventually got covered up. But I started to see things early on. I started to see things in these, and I was like, they're Rorschachs. And um, 
Charles at one point was like, Paul, you need to paint something. And he's like, like an eye, like a little eye. I was like, no, 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 it has to be what they see. They have to see what they see. So what, that's why they're called $40 Rorschachs. $40 is cheap for art. And um, there was a problem with, I thought of how to hang them and I just really never came up with a solution because even with the shell, then you miss the whole other side. Um, and I guess they're sculptures. I made sculpture. Um, and you know, I guess I imagine that people would just like, you know, they're, they're, you know, just have them around. The Kamar varnish protects them. You could use them for your coffee. You can put your coffee in. Can you see this on your desk with a coffee on it, cup on it? You clean it right off. Man, I should be selling y'all cleaning aids as well as ours. But anyhow, this is a good deal, good value. Um, they look, I intentionally used fluorescent and um, glow in the dark and iridescent um, inks and powders. And I also got bottles of the element, like you can buy pigment, like ultramarine blue as a powder, as a pigment, without us, you know, it just hasn't been put in any kind of solution yet. So I bought my favorite of those, favorite colors and all of those, and I would sprinkle that into the mix as I poured, like I say, I would stack them up in columns and then pour water down, ink on them. Under a black light, they are completely different and really amazing. They like have depth. They look like caves. So if you have a black light, you can even come up and check it out. I just I promise if you buy it and it doesn't glow under a black light, bring it, you can bring it right back. Um, so I guess for me, one very satisfying thing about what this was I really enjoyed the process and made way too much and Maybe there were things that were planned for the show that aren't done yet. It's okay. You know, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, which is really comfortable. And um, I've, I'm, a, I'm a musician, but I've never, I've, I've been in bands. I was in bands when I was like, you know, post-punk, I guess. I was in the post-punk power trio. That's all I'm saying. I played the bass and sang at the same time. It's good to remember that I could do that at one point. It's, it's harder than it seems. But I have set up a recording studio at home, and I put together a soundtrack for this show, which was originally cassette only. At the end of the cassette, you turn it over and you hear the same, same music, but all backwards. Because I was doing that anyway while making music, it was like reversing a lot of the music files. So it wasn't intended. I bought four thrift store cassette recorders. The first one was two dollars and it worked for like 12 takes. So that's why I spent up to ten dollars for the three others that didn't work at all. So right now I don't have a working cassette recorder. When I do the cassette only release we'll come back into being. But the music is on there right now on the CD and if you get a chance if you're ever here later um, feel free to play it. And it's spiritual music, meant kind of for the future, but with like prehistoric Persia in mind.